So fixing American soccer, opening the USA soccer market to all with a system of promotion and relegation looked like it had to take one of two routes. Either we reform the existing U.S. Soccer Federation or we start an alternate federation and we get FIFA to sanction the new federation instead of the current U.S. Soccer Federation. And so the U.S. Soccer presidential election took place this past weekend here in, in mid-February. And from what it looks like, it's just basically confirmed that U.S. soccer itself is set up to uh, just be a perpetual proxy for the interests of the MLS slash Soccer United marketing sum company. It's a shell of what a real soccer federation should be. So essentially, we don't have an actual governing soccer federation, one that aligns with FIFA standards, one that's similar to the rest of the free world. See, the issue with U.S. soccer is that because it is given one single company or club, MLS, exclusive control of its Division I sanction, basically it's put all its eggs in that MLS sum basket. So that means the success of the U.S. Soccer Federation itself uh, quite literally rests on the success and profit of this one single club slash company, MLS sum. So if you compare this to a, another governing federation around the world, it would be like let's say the English Football Association making the profits of one single club like Manchester United its core priority. So now what you have here with U.S. Soccer is, well, we've given MLS some the top dog spot in our ecosystem, uh, and therefore this MLS some entity has to be successful in order for U.S. Soccer as a whole to be successful, or at least the one under the sanctioned governing federation, USSF. Uh, and then, of course, the, the lines are blurry between uh, you know, who actually runs the U.S. Soccer Federation. Do MLS some controllers actually make the decisions in MLS? Again, is the tail, is the tail wagging the dog, so to speak, here in U.S. Soccer? Uh, and it's looking like it more and more. Um, basically, yeah, like I said, it's just a proxy of uh, the U.S. Soccer Federation, a proxy of a single company or club. And so this is why we need to fundamentally blow up the U.S. Soccer Federation in terms of you know, completely not uh, get FIFA or the U.S. government to step in and completely mandate that a structural change, 100% structural change be made, or now it's looking like the, the best route would be to start an alternate federation uh, to replace it and get FIFA to desanction USSF and grant authority to the new American soccer governing federation. So um, the election process itself uh, really painted a great picture of how protected this MLS sum authority or interest in U.S. soccer uh, is. The whole election process itself is weighted in a manner so that MLS and some is pretty much guaranteed to have its hand-picked candidate win. And so let's say one president steps down like Sunil Gulati, well, of course, MLS some is going to pick a preferred successor or successors. Carlos Cordero, the winner in this case, and another one, Kathy Carter, who also ran and almost won. Um, and even though there's a mathematical possibility of non-MLS some candidates winning, it's a non-realistic mathematical possibility. So Winalda, Martino, um, Hope Solo, any other of the, the quote-unquote outsider candidates, as far as we know, they have a shot to pick up some votes, but do they have a shot to actually get the 50 plus one majority? 
um, very, very unlikely that that would actually happen because what you need is MLS to essentially flip on itself in the voting because in the weighted process, you have MLS itself, MLS-owned properties like NWSL, um, and then you also have MLS-employed players, MLS uh, indirectly employed media members, you know, work for Fox or, or ESPN, voting, um, people with credentials in MLS. Because MLS interests are essentially are so large in the U.S. soccer, presidential voting weight itself uh, basically requires MLS to turn on itself in the voting. Again, which could happen, but why would it do that? Or why would people employed by MLS risk their uh, livelihood by going against MLS? Again, these are, like, for example, the Players' Councils, which is a, which is a big chunk of the vote percentage. Uh, why would they risk threatening their livelihood and career by, uh, by upsetting MLS, even though maybe you're, you, you will be able to keep your vote private? So, again, the idea of a free and open election, a U.S. soccer presidential election is, is not true. Again, there's that mathematical possibility where you can say, oh yeah, it's free and open, but uh, realistically, um, even if everyone banded together, the, the state association, the adult association, um, got a big chunk of the players, council, uh, it's, prob it's most likely not going to happen. And I think that's why you saw during the election, um, the Sinogulati, the guy who's stepping down and partially responsible for this big mess, uh, he, was, he was joking about uh, extending his term limit, things like that. And uh, it was just sort of a fun and games exercise for him, it appeared. At least that's what his spirits were like. He didn't seem anxious or worried at all. And it, it begs the question, would this MLS some controlling body be stupid enough to leave itself vulnerable to an uprising from the people through the actual uh, voting process itself? Would it allow itself to be undermined simply by a revolution of people going through the state associations, getting nominated for voting positions, uh, and showing up on election day and, oh, surprise, surprise, well, some has been ousted from this position of authority in U.S. soccer. Um, no, I think this process and the way it's weighted is by design so that only MLS some interests can win. And so it's a self-preserving U.S. soccer federation now, or a proxy federation that operates in the interests of MLS and Soccer United Marketing. So... Uh, one more thing that we did see in the fallout of the presidential election and Carlos Guerrero winning, um, a lot of people were upset with him. Most people are upset with him as just a, another establishment ca candidate, a Sunil Gulati sidekick. Um, but again, the blowback from certain people, media members, who tend to back the MLS some U.S. soccer establishment as is, has been, oh, well, go keep making your own change in U.S. soccer. You need to um, get involved in the political side of becoming nominated to vote and, and get in your state association, make a difference on the ground, which sounds good on the surface, which sounds logical, but here's the issue. Um, why should it be up to the people, the practitioners on the ground in the trenches of American soccer to have to um, infiltrate the governing soccer federation, whose job is to align American soccer with FIFA statutes, open system, merit-based competition, equality, and opportunity for all. Why are we supposed to drop everything to finally kick you in the pants to make you do your job as a governing soccer federation. So this idea of blaming the victims or blaming the people captive in a uh, discriminatory open system, uh, again, is just 
is just a complete joke. We need a U.S. Soccer Federation that truly looks out for all constituents in American soccer, uh, that prioritizes, number one, being a representative of all people in American soccer. So uh, right now it's this attitude of, well, we're on top, we're in control, um, so get off your butt and, and do something about it. Ha! So uh, the, the condescension is off the charts there, and... We're just getting to a point where it's time for an alternate federation. And this break point is becoming even more clear now after this U.S. soccer presidential election. No longer are we under this facade of the USSF Federation as is being about growing the game and um, inclusion for all people and diversity. It's becoming clear it's all a power and a money game for the MLS some controlling body and its proxy federation, Soccer United Marketing. Um, and proxy federations are not real soccer federations. We're going to need a new governing soccer federation to take U.S. soccer's place. And then we go to FIFA and uh, ask to be granted FIFA sanctioning. FIFA yanks USSF sanctioning and all our problems are solved. MLS can go off and do its own thing like an NFL and go prosper. Godspeed to it if it doesn't uh, hold our divisional sanctions captive. Knock yourselves out. Uh, we will reserve divisional sanctions for open leagues only, leagues that want to unite under the FIFA mandate of merit-based promotion relegation competition and then we'll truly have a situation where the people, the market, can fairly decide. And I think the open system side will clearly triumph in that scenario. So a free and open, fair, democratic U.S. soccer federation, it doesn't look like we have it here. So what's the next step? Unless the U.S. government's lawsuits or FIFA can step in and, and mandate a complete blow up restructuring of the U.S. Soccer Federation, we're going to need a new alternate American Soccer Federation. We're going to need clubs and people to band together and form a coalition and say we're ready to uh, unite under something new and we're ready to unite under FIFA's merit-based global standard of soccer. So if you like this video, make sure to share it out across all of your social media platforms and also make sure you hit the subscribe button right here on my channel and I'll talk to you soon.